speakers this month, and I think he has done a great job, and I'm sorry, and he is sorry he's not been here this, this month to introduce the speakers. Um, we have had some great ones, and we have another good one today, and to staff, staff, staff Sergeant Paul Jetty. Um, and he's representing the U.S. Army. He is a corporate, and the U.S. Army is a corporate sponsor of International Qantas Club, and we want to embrace that relationship at the local level. Staff Sergeant Jetty is a native of New Hampshire. He is a graduate of NASA Senior High School Class of 2001, and he enlisted in the U.S. Army in November of 2004. Staff Sergeant Jetty, I'm struggling to say that, completed his basic and advanced individual training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. He is a graduate of the Airborne School for, at Fort Benning, Georgia, and Rodney shared with me that this is probably where the saying, incoming always has the right of way, came from. Um, and his occupational training was at, as a, board, a field artillery surveyor and meteorological crew member. Um, he is a graduate of the Warriors Leader, Leader course, the Army Basic Recruiting course, along with numerous other arms training courses. His awards and decorations include the Army Commendation Medal with two oak leaf clusters, the Army Achievement Award numerous times, the Valoris Unit Achievement Award, Afghanistan Campaign, Campaign Medal, the Iraq Campaign Medal, and the Global War of Terrorism Medal, along with numerous other awards for outstanding service. Staff Sergeant Jetty entered the recruiting command in November 2014 as a re detailed recruiter, and today he is sharing his insights on the Army presence in the Greater Lafayette area and the challenges in his work. Please join me in welcoming Staff Sergeant Paul Jetty as our guest today. Yeah, hey. oh. All the way. All right. So, first off, uh, I'm one to. I got my little speech here, okay? But uh, I wanted to take a second because this is, believe it or not, the first uh, speaking engagement that I come out here and do in any community. Um, you know, besides giving out the usual awards and stuff like that that I normally would. Um, so it uh, gives me great honor to be here today, especially amongst the presence of so many veterans that have also sacrificed their times, their talents, you know, and I, I know what that sacrifice entails, uh, to be able to lay the foundation uh, for uh, men and women such as myself to be, go, be able to go out there and volunteer our services to the country as well. So let's give them a round of applause as well. <laughs> also, thank you very much for the wonderful introduction. Um, and thank you to uh, all the uh, Kiwanans here uh, for allowing me to come in here and speak today. Um, what I'd like to kind of go over is the uh, Army training uh, and a couple different programs that we offer. Um, in the Lafayette area, uh, what we like to do is we like to go out there and speak to young men and women that may have thought of or may not have thought of opportunities uh, to go out there and volunteer their service to the country. Um, in addition to that, we also like to become a part of the community. Okay, um, We have uh, We've gone out there and done partnerships with the high schools, uh, you know, sponsorships. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, we've got radio advertisements and stuff like that running right now. Um, been a part of uh, some of the Purdue sports programs, uh, specifically the uh, Salute to Service game uh, that they recently had, um, along with uh, many, many uh, high school activities. Um, so our number one uh, you know, uh, goal is to be able to go out there and serve our communities. So before I jump into this, if there is anybody um, that is open to either establishing some sort of uh, you know, volunteer relationship with us, yeah, we welcome you uh, to come in and talk to us uh, so that we can go out there and uh, help out the uh, men and women of the uh, Lafayette area. Um, so my name is Staff Sergeant Jetty. Uh, I currently uh, work at the Army Lafayette Recruiting Center. Um, I've been enlisted in active duty for uh, 13 years this past November and um, have served as an Army recruiter uh, primarily for the last four years. Over the last four years, I've had the opportunity to go out there and speak to young men and women uh, all over South Texas and uh, Indiana about opportunities that the Army the Army Reserve 
uh, can offer them on their path to, to success. Okay. Uh, my main goal and objection, uh, objection is to go out there and provide a future to young men and women that already have either a plan established or don't have a plan established, but to be able to teach, coach, and mentor them into a career within the United States Army or the Army Reserve. Basically build off of the foundation that they already have established for themselves and show them how we can go ahead and enhance their career uh, through the Army. Uh, the United States Army, of course, uh, offers a wide variety of training, okay? Now, what I'd like to do is just kind of give you all the basics on some of the training that we do provide, okay? Uh, so that, you, you know, because I get a lot of questions a lot of times saying, hey, how, you know, how is basic training like now? Or, hey, how is, you know, how does your job training work? Or, you know, what opportunities are provided to folks that have served their country after they get out of service? Um, so what I'd like to do is just kind of go through and touch on those couple key points. Uh, the United States Army and Army Reserve are known as the premier ground force for the nation. Okay, uh, training in the United States Army is challenging. All right, the United the young men and women uh, that come out there and volunteer their time and services to our nation have the opportunity to go in there and develop um, their mental, emotional, and physical strengths needed for success within the United States Army and later on uh, within their life. Once completed with a 10-week basic training course, okay, their future starts with solid training in one of either 150 careers on the active duty side or one of 120 careers on the Army Reserve side. The jobs, the jobs they select for themselves, okay. The Army has jobs right now that range all the way from military intelligence to being a plumber, an electrician, and the majority of these jobs can be found right here in the community uh, within the United States Army Reserves. Within their training, they're going to be able to go out there and gain the confidence, self-discipline, and leadership skills that will help themselves grow both professionally and within the Army and the civilian sector later on. Uh, training is broken down into four different phases. Uh, the four different phases are red phase, white phase, blue phase, and then of course you have your advanced individual training. The locations for basic training are currently at Fort Benning, Georgia, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and Fort Jackson, South Carolina. The four phases being red phase, white phase, and blue phase, and then your advanced individual training basically break down just like this. Your red phase is going to be a compilation of uh, basically, uh, your reception period and then being introduced to the Army, okay, and how we work. Uh, the recruits out there are going to train and participate in tr field training exercises. And the most important thing about the Army is, is that we all work together as a team, okay? Uh, and that is one of the biggest things that I learned, especially going to basic training, was that, you know, I'm not going to say I had a big chip on my shoulder, but, you know, when I walked in, I was 24 years old. And I had lived life just a little bit, all right. Um, and you know, standing in front of a uh, you know a drill instructor telling me what to do was kind of like, uh, you know, because I always did everything, you know, myself. You know, um, there was no team. So when I had to learn how to go out there and adjust to working together as a team, it kind of made me see the other side of things. Okay. Um, so of course, you know, they're working together, you know, as a team within that first phase. Uh, white phase primarily focuses on marksmanship training. Uh, you know, they're going to have the opportunity to go in there and utilize a wide variety of uh, weapon systems and stuff. Uh, and at the same time, they're also going to have the opportunity to qualify on those weapons as well. Um, and then blue phase, of course, they're going to continue on with their weapons training. Uh, they're going to have the opportunity to go in there and participate in what we call the night infiltration course. Um, which is basically an obstacle course that they go through at night. Um, and then once that night infiltration course is complete, they're going to be uh, sent out to the field, uh, typically between a week to two weeks, uh, and collaborate all of the, uh, the instruction that they've been given uh, and be able to apply it into a field environment. Now, once they're done with that training, they're going to go off to their advanced individual training, uh, which is going to be for the specific job that they chose for themselves. That training could last anywhere between 8 to 10 weeks, all the way up in some instances to 52 weeks, okay? Um, Fort Sam Houston being the uh, 
basically what I would consider the premier medical uh, facility for the Army, uh, besides Walter Reed. Uh, but a majority of our medical uh, you know, staff is trained up there at Fort Sam Houston. Uh, when I was stationed down in Texas, I had the opportunity to go out there and visit Fort Sam Houston because I was assigned to the base. Um, and uh, you know, they really do have an outstanding medical program. Um, so I would, I would encourage folks that are currently studying out at uh, Purdue, Ivy Tech, or have the aspiration of just coming in and looking into opportunities within the medical, uh, you know, the medical realm within the, you know, the uh, service to come on in, sit down, and have a conversation with us. Um, as far as the education, uh, I get a lot of questions on what the Army can provide as far as education. Uh, the Army values education, whether a young man or woman is about to begin college or has already taken courses. Okay. Um, the Army and the Army Reserves are able to go out there and help students continue their education. A lot of times we like to, we hear folks say, well, you know, um, I want to go out there and get my college degree, then join the Army or Army Reserves. I like to look at it as, why not do the Army and college? You have that opportunity. Um, active duty soldiers in the Army uh, may qualify for money. Um, under the Montgomery GI Bill as well as enlistment bonuses up to $40,000 right now. Um, or they may qualify for up to $65,000 to pay back federally insured loans. Okay. In addition to that $40,000 bonus as well. So they could get the $65,000 to repay back the federally insured loans and walk in there with a cash uh, enlistment bonus of $40,000. Soldiers on active duty um, also qualify for benefits under the post 9-11 GI Bill. Post 9-11 GI Bill is pretty phenomenal. If you don't know anything about it, Post 9-11 GI Bill affords uh, the opportunity for a student to go in there and receive 36 months of education and tuitions and fees paid. And uh, once they've gone through and had that, if they decide later on after serving, you know, let's say they serve 20 years of service, and during that time in service you receive what they call tuition assistance. Tuition assistance typically is paid out at the rate of $4,000 annually. So you would take that, multiply that times 20 years, you're looking at roughly $80,000 that they ended up receiving while in service for tuition assistance. Well, a lot of times vets will go back and look and say, well, I don't really need to utilize you know, my, my GI Bill or my post-911 GI Bill. Why don't I go ahead and um, just hold off? So what they did is with the post-911, excuse me, the post-911 GI Bill, is um, they made it transferable to spouses and dependents uh, so that if they have served six years and agreed to an additional term of four years, you're able to transfer your post 9-11 GI benefit to your spouse or to your children as a college fund. Uh, if you decide to utilize that benefit yourself, you have the ability to not only get your tuition and fees paid for 36 months, but they're also going to pay for your housing as well. Okay. So I always use this as an example. For those of you all that know about California, you know, the average rough estimate cost of housing out there is about $3,000 a month. Well, if I was living in California and I was attending college in California, then not only would the um, you know, post-911 GI Bill uh, cover my tuition and expenses, but it would also cover my housing cost out there in California. So they're basically going to college um, you know, straight up off their uh, post-911 post 9-11 GI Bill, okay? Um, <clears throat> Army Reserves, Army Reserve soldiers, men and women have the opportunity to earn basically uh, up to $25,000 to attend college. Uh, and right now they have enlistment bonuses that range anywhere from zero to $20,000, okay? Uh, depending upon their qualifications. Uh, and if they have successfully completed some college courses, uh, they may be eligible for a student loan repayment option of up to $50,000. On active duty, they have a student loan repayment option right now um, that goes all the way up to $65,000. Uh, I've had a couple of uh, students that have come in from Purdue as uh, grads uh, that have enlisted uh, OCS, which is Officer Candidate, and have received uh, student loan repayment options uh, up to $30,000 right now. Okay, um, So those are some of the things that the, you know, the educational benefits uh, mm -hmm. You know, those are some of the benefits that you're gaining as far as the education is concerned within the United States Army. Uh, the Army also offers uh, the concurrent admissions program, 
or CONAP. CONAP is basically designed to let you enroll in one of more than 1,800 participating colleges and defer your education until you complete your enlistment. Okay? The program's purpose is to be able to go out there and link future soldiers to a CONAP college at the time of enlistment in the Army or Army Reserve. During the enlistment process, um, basically within the United States Army or the Army Reserve, um, recruiters such as myself refer those future soldiers over to CONAP colleges, uh, typically in their home areas. The future soldiers uh, end up emailing basically a college referral uh, and their intent to enroll. Uh, it ends up getting emailed from the CONAP program um, stating what their intent is and then that CONAP program will then go ahead and send that intent to the college and the college then in turn uh, sends the information out to the soldier. Okay, And then of course um, during that time they have the opportunity to apply for admissions, uh, they have the opportunity to prepare for their academic experience, uh, they also have the opportunity to begin working on college, uh, you know, college courses um, and basically stay in touch with that college up until they complete their term of service and go in and start on their educational journey. Uh, the intent of the program is for soldiers to transition directly from the Army to their CONAP college. Uh, currently in uh, the uh, Lafayette area, uh, Ivy Tech College is currently noted as a CONAP college. Uh, additional colleges include Indiana State University and Vincennes University, uh, just to name a few. If you're interested in knowing what all the uh, CONAP colleges are in this area, uh, feel free to see me afterwards and I can go ahead and get you that information. Another great opportunity that the Army is presenting uh, young men and women right now is the Army's PAYS program. The Army's PAYS program uh, partners with companies and corporations and within the public sector and agencies and signs agreements to provide job interviews and potential employment to separating regular Army and Army Reserve soldiers, ROTC cadets and active duty Army officers. Okay? This is an outstanding program. Okay? Uh, enlisted soldiers basically have the opportunity to go in there and select a pays option during their enlistment process. Okay? ROTC cadets like uh, uh, up at Purdue uh, would have the opportunity to select their pays partner while enrolled in the ROTC program. But um, the interviews are guaranteed interviews, all right? Uh, guaranteed job interviews to those pay soldiers upon completion of their training, career program, or commissioning and or first term of service. Um, basically providing that all the qualifications are met. Uh, military occupational specialties and degree career fields are matched with civilian jobs. Um, I will tell you uh, straight up that I know that Cal or Caterpillar is one of our PACE partners um, and there is, I mean I've got like five pages of PACE partners so if you're interested in knowing who the PACE partners are uh, that we're associated with, let me know I have copies and I'd be more than willing to share them with you. Um, the Army Reserves are eligible as well to interview immediately upon completion of training. So what that means is basically, I'm going to use this as an example, you could be a college student at Ivy Tech or Purdue, decide, hey, I want to go out there and volunteer to serve my time as a United States Army Reservist. You would go ahead, it doesn't matter what year of school you're in, okay, if you're a you know, a freshman, sophomore, and you want to go out there and serve your, you know, serve your country, we can go ahead and send you off to basic training, either on a split option program, um, or which is basically you would complete your uh, spring sem or your fall or spring semester. We'd send you off to basic training, you complete basic training, come back, and then you continue on with your semester, and then we send you off to job training. Or we could do it, you know, in a one shot. You finish up your sophomore year. We could go ahead and send them off, or junior, senior, doesn't matter what year. We could send them off for their training, their job training. They could come right back and pick up right where they left off with their education, okay? Um, within this PAYS program, once they pick up where they left off with their education, a lot of times I'll speak to students out there at the college and they'll say, hey, I'm thinking about an internship, or I'm thinking about going to do an internship with Microsoft, or whatever the case may be, okay? Um, this program here is going to provide them with a guaranteed job interview to any one of these PAYS partners being in the reserves. Now that they've completed their, their basic training and their job training, they are now eligible for that interview. And, you know, if one of their 
uh, desires, you know, is to interview, let's say, for Caterpillar, because that's the one that comes to mind most frequent. You know, um, they have the ability to do that through the PAYS program and be able to take that education, continue that education, but also work for that company while they're completing their education. Um, some of the requirements for enlisted soldiers are they going to be either high school seniors and graduates, college students and graduates, or receive an honorable discharge. In addition, uh, must have all their completed certifications, licensing, and special job related requirements established by the base partner. Okay, so you have to have you have to meet all the requirements in order to receive that uh, interview. Um, as far as the state of recruiting, um, since the draft ended back in 1973, the Army uh, Recruiting uh, Command has been an all-volunteer force, okay? And it has become the most important job in the Army, all right? Uh, our headquarters is located at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Um, it is known as the United States Army Recruiting Command. Uh, they basically go out there and manage the recruiting mission for active duty in the reserve component of the Army. Uh, currently, the United States Army Recruiting Command has received a mission increase of an estimated 13,000 soldiers for this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, our main focus here in the Lafayette area um, is basically finding individuals that are looking to volunteer that are graduates graduates of either high school, graduates of college, okay? Um, right now, um, not to put any specific numbers out there, um, our estimated mission is for our office is to find an estimated 100 volunteers uh, that are interested in either serving on the Army active duty side or the Army reserve side. Um, you know, we look to the communities, of course, to share the opportunities and benefits that are out there. We invite the opportunity for folks to come in and sit down with no obligation to join, okay, and learn about their opportunities. A lot of times, uh, folks have, a lot of folks, believe it or not, that I end up uh, putting into service have never thought about service. Um, and a majority of the ones that have, it's just walk in, thank you very much, I know what I'm looking at, and they're ready to rock, or ready to go, excuse me. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, a majority of folks, you know, a majority of folks don't know what their opportunities, what their benefits are out there. You know, the Army, uh, as I would like to say, is not the Army of 30 years ago. There's been a lot of change, you know, um, but there is a lot of programs uh, that have been designed and developed to enhance the opportunities for young men and women uh, within the community and within the United States. Um, so I thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to come up here and speak. Um, at this time, if you all have any questions, um, I'm available to answer them if you all have any questions. Does anybody have any questions on anything that I covered? Go ahead, sir. Did I hear you say basic is 10 weeks now? Basic training is 10 weeks long now. Um, it used to be nine weeks and four days. Now it is ten weeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mine is only eight weeks. <laughs> so, again, so it, the um, the army has definitely uh, I'm not streamlined exactly. Um, you know, from back when you know uh, you know my grandfather even served. Uh, so as far as you know the uh, the training requirements, so the training is ten weeks. So. Uh, and honestly, that first week is usually a reception week where they go in and end up receiving their uniforms and uh, you know medical records get established and stuff like that. So, are they inducted where they're going to have the basic training, or is there an induction area here? Like I went up to Fort Sheridan before going to basic training. Uh, do they have anything like that today? So uh, in <coughs> Indianapolis, uh, Fort Harrison, I believe it was, uh, the base that closed. Uh, they have uh, the DFAS facility up there. Uh, it w and, the, and actually, the bottom of that building is known as a military entrance processing station. Uh, the induction into military service is done right there at the processing uh, center. So uh, the typical day for an individual coming to join the Army now uh, would be they'd have to be a uh, test 
which is the ASVAB test qualified. Um, they would also have to be physically qualified. Once they go through their tests and their uh, physical qualifications, um, we do what's called a future remote reservation, uh, which is they have the opportunity to choose their job. They know exactly what their educational incentives are, where their training's at, um, how long their training is, when they leave for training, but they'll have that FS2R uh, there. And then they'll sit down in front of a guidance counselor after they pass their test and their physical, and they'll have the opportunity to sign their contract. Once they sign their contract, um, they will go into the uh, enlistment room and be inducted into the service. What, what's your percentage of guys that don't qualify when they come in and want to join? I don't have an exact number on that. I mean, tattoos will keep you out, right? It depends on I mean, exactly what the extent. Okay, so I'll, the number one, uh, what I would tell you is there is a lot of young men and women that come in and talk to us. Um, our current uh, current regulation changes all the time uh, as far as what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Uh, as far as tattoos, tattoos on the hands, face, neck uh, are right now a uh, disqualifying factor uh, unless it is a religious tattoo on the uh, finger. Um, but as far as the specifics, uh, you know, as far as specific qualifications, um, I can say that a majority of the folks uh, that we speak to that are looking to serve have some sort of either uh, moral or you know health uh, disqualifying uh, issue. So, like uh, like drugs? Not necessarily drugs. I mean, we we of course we see drugs. You know, that's not a drugs is not necessarily a, a disqualifier. Um, it depends on what it ex exactly is how long and if there was treatment and so on mm -hmm. and so forth um, but I mean yeah drugs is something that we uh, that we would typically see of course you know when they're going up there to you know enlist or anything like that we try to make sure that well we make sure excuse me that they are not um, on any type of drugs or narcotics <laughs> when they go up there um, but I would say that when we go out there to talk to the high schools and to the students out there uh, we typically, um, you know, tell them, hey, you know, y'all stay away from the law, stay away from drugs, keep your nose clean, you know, and uh, just stay active and healthy. And if this is something that interests you, you know, when you turn 17, 18 years old, you know, feel free to reach out to us and we'll see what we can do for you. Um, but, you know, we're constantly trying to push that, uh, that positive message in the communities, you know, to stay away from, you know, uh, the topics that we just identified so any other does that answer your questions yes okay any other questions all right thank you very much